Welcome to St. John Newman Church. We're so glad you're here. Today is the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time, and these are the parish announcements for the week of February 5th. Please pray for the repose of the soul of Manuel Manny Cristobal, whose funeral mass will be Monday, February 13th at 10 a.m. This ministry's leaders are Teddy Miller, Marianne Gorski, and Carol Hamilton, and they will be explaining to us how the ministry serves people that are going through the process of grief. When is the best time for someone to begin the journey with the bereavement ministry? Well, there really is no best time, but we kind of have found that um, after the funeral, after the family and extended family have all left the home, uh, when, when the bereaved is kind of by themselves and the realization that they have lost a dear loved one hits, that's a good time for some support. Does it matter how long ago the loss of a loved one has occurred? Sometimes the person has lost more than one family member and the first one they were not aware of or had no interest in joining a group. When the second passing happens, they're ready. Is this a safe space for me to share my thoughts and feelings? We strive very hard to make sure that anyone attending the group feels safe. We have absolutely no judgment on how you grieve. Um, some folks are angry, some are in denial, it doesn't matter. We do not judge that. You can talk in this group about what you are feeling here and now with no fear of judgment of any kind. When does a bereavement ministry meet? We meet every other Thursday evening from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And then opposite weeks, Tuesday afternoons from 2 to 3 p.m. This way, if you're a working person, you can come in the evening. If you are home in the day or unable to drive at night, you can come in the afternoon or you can come to both. We strive to gear our, our discussion to the people that are there. Yeah. Uh, if we have somebody new, we try to deal with the beginnings of grief, mm -hmm. but then we also will go along with the people that have been there longer right. to deal with other issues that they may have. Coming up on the weekend of February 18th and 19th will be our annual woodcraft sale. Handcrafted by one of our very talented St. John Newman parishioners, these beautiful creations will be on sale in the gathering space. More details are in the bulletin. Shine your light as a volunteer for this year's Vacation Bible School, Stellar. Details are in the bulletin. As we showed last week, new images are starting to come in of the beautiful art being created for our new church. Today we're looking at the initial rendering and the construction, painting, and assembly of the beautiful stained glass of Mary. Isn't she absolutely beautiful? Hello. Well, several weeks ago, I introduced the Penitential Act. It is important to remember that from back then that uh, that the Penitential Act isn't always about just the forgiveness of sins, or as much about that as it is about us acknowledging our sinfulness and placing ourselves at God's mercy before we celebrate the sacred mysteries, the Mass. If you remember, I said that the priest invites us to consider our sins with brethren, or the priest can say brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. The Roman Missal, which instructs the priests, 
allows uh, for a pause of silence. And actually, you're supposed to have a pause of silence so people can recollect themselves. Then he leads the congregation in one of the three different penitential forms. The first form is commonly known as the confidior, or from the Latin, I confess. And it's just taken from the first two words of the prayer, I confess. This is a communal prayer that we all say together, which the celebrant has the option of saying at any Mass, Sundays, feast days, weekday Masses, although it seems to be more appropriate at certain liturgical times of the year, like Lent. And that's how we highlight it uh, at, here at St. John Newman. In this prayer, we confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. This is a reminder that sin does not only hurts our relationship with God, but our, our weakens our bond with others. It is like a tennis match, says the great Catholic convert, Father Ronald Knox, who wrote the book Mass in Slow Motion. He said, just as you apologize to your partner when you've made a perfectly rotten stroke at tennis, so when you have sinned, you want to apologize to your fellow Christians that you have let them down. And this is the way we do it. And anybody who's been um, on a sports team can kind of identify with this. In the reminder of the Convidior, we ask the Blessed Mother and the whole heavenly court of angels and saints, as well as our brothers and sisters in Christ to intercede for us before the throne of God. Once again, this reminds us about the communion of saints, that as the baptized, we are all connected, whether we are deceased or alive. When the priest invokes God's pardon at the end, saying, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And the people respond to this by making the ascent, Amen, I believe. The Kyrie eleison, or Lord have mercy invocations, follow unless they have occurred in an alternate form of the penitential act, the, form, the third form that we'll be talking about. This can be said or sung, and we encounter it that way here at our parish in both ways. It has the distinction of being the only Greek said during the Roman liturgy. Kyrie eleison means Lord have mercy. Christe eleison it means Christ have mercy. If the confidior is not said or recited, the celebrant may choose another form of penitential prayer a twofold exchange between the priest and the assembly by which we all acknowledge our sinfulness and ask for the Lord's mercy. This form is rarely used, but it's so beautiful, and I hope that maybe we can train ourselves to do it here during one of our liturgical seasons. This is how it goes. The priest says, Have mercy on us, O Lord, to which the people reply, for we have sinned against you. The priest then says, Show us, O Lord, your mercy, to which the people respond, and grant us your salvation. Then the priest goes on to do the traditional prayer of absolution, and the people respond with a hearty amen. The third and final penitential act option is a format that offers infinite possibilities. This format always has three phrases directed to Christ. We have to remember that. They're always directed to Christ, and they're integrated with the Kyrie eleison, or the Lord have mercy. One you've probably heard and responded to in your time coming to Mass is, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. There are several additional options in the back of the Roman Missal, about seven the priest or deacon can select from these options depending on the liturgical time of the year or the mass readings. They can even construct their own as long as they are directed to Christ. Another example from the back of the Roman Missal is, Lord Jesus, you raised us to new life. Kyrie eleison. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christe eleison. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Kyrie eleison. 
This might be used during the Easter season because of the nature of how it's the words. During the Christmas season, the priest may opt to use, Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. It seems kind of sitting for the, fitting for the Feast of the Incarnation, right? Talking about uh, Mary and, and, and God being the Father and the Incarnation being the flesh and fleshed. These acclamations, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, which praise the Lord and implore his mercy, are some of the oldest rites or acts in the church's tradition. And they are combined, uh, they combine active contrition and hope. And they are an acknowledgement of our sorrow and at the same time of our confidence in the goodness of him who we have offended. We know that Jesus loves us and has made us his own family and has the power to heal us, make us whole and holy. And so with all our strength, we call out to him, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. I am the 